In this video, you will learn to compute a one-sample T hypothesis test and a one-sample T confidence interval with raw data using StatCrunch. The data set I am using is called Apple Juice Bottles. This data set comes from the book Statistics, Informed Decisions Using Data by Michael Sullivan. The apple juice column contains the amount in ounces for each of the 22 bottles taken as a random sample from a manufacturer's assembly line. The filling machine is not precise, which makes the amount of juice vary from bottle to bottle. Each bottle's label states it contains 64 ounces of apple juice. The manufacturer requires that the mean amount of juice in a bottle be 64.05 ounces to decrease the chance of a bottle being under the 64 ounce threshold by random chance. Given the manufacturer's concern about filling the bottles, we're going to conduct a test to determine if the mean amount per bottle may be less than the target of 64.05 ounces. We're going to compute a one sample T hypothesis test. To do so under the stat menu, we'll go down to T stats, one sample with data. We're going to select the apple juice column and then down here we're going to perform a hypothesis test. For this case our null hypothesis is 64.05 and our alternative hypothesis is less than because we want to test if the mean amount of apple juice in a bottle is actually lower than the 64.05 ounce standard. We'll click Compute, and the output table provides the statistics from the test, including the test statistic and the p-value. StatCrunch can also create a confidence interval based on the t-distribution. To do so, under Options, we'll choose Edit. This takes us back to the original window where we set up our one sample t-test. Under Perform, we're going to choose Confidence Interval. By default, StatCrunch uses the value of 0.95, which will produce a 95% confidence interval for the population mean. For this example, I'll leave it at 0.95 and click Compute. Now, instead of a p-value and a test statistic, the results show a 95% confidence interval for the mean amount in one of the manufacturer's bottles. L limit represents the lower limit, and U limit represents the upper limit. StatCrunch can also store these results in the data table. To do so, go back under Options, Edit, and under Output, choose Store and Data Table. I'll click Compute, and now the results are stored in new data columns that can be used for future calculations.